An old warehouse that is no longer needed. Is it a mountain of rubble destined for the landfill? Or is it a well-preserved collection of timbers, metals, and other materials that can be recovered and sold into growing markets? This is the story of the deconstruction of Building 802, one of a group of large warehouses at the Port of Oakland, California. The building had to be removed to make way for improved freight facilities, but conventional demolition was not an option. Through negotiations with the historic preservation community, we came up with a plan to deconstruct the buildings rather than demolish them because the wood was of historic value as well as monetary value. As part of the process of soliciting bids, the Port of Oakland opened the building for inspection by demolition contractors and potential buyers for the timbers that could be recovered. The winning bidder for the deconstruction contract was Zacor Companies. Most times when you're doing a uh, public works project, it's low bid, and, um, and so the person with the best price gets the, the award. And this particular project or contract, they let it known out front. It wasn't just on price. It was weighted on uh, the aspects of the timber salvage, the aspects of the nonprofit's workforce. Building 802 became an opportunity to demonstrate the potential for deconstruction and StopWaste.org, a regional agency dedicated to reducing waste along with the city and port of Oakland, provided consultants to monitor and document the work. Construction and demolition generates about 20% of the waste that goes to landfill and so we have a lot of programs that work with the construction and building industry and we work a lot with the construction and demolition recycling industry to help reduce the amount of waste that goes to landfill. The contractor approached the task by working from the top down. First, the roof had to come off, and that meant stripping the tar and gravel roofing materials without damaging the underlying wooden decking. As the paper, tar, and gravel roof was removed, the wooden deck was revealed. To remove the boards that made up the roof deck, most of the nails had to be pulled by hand, one at a time. Removing the 2x6 boards that made up the roof decking was done entirely using hand tools. Obviously the most labor intense part is the roof and the stripping of the roof. It's a smaller lumber. Every bundle is assigned a number. It's uh, quantified in board foot. And then we put together a bill of lading for each vehicle that leaves the facility and then we track it to the destination. Removing the 22 foot long 4 by 12 inch purlins that supported the roof deck called for the use of heavy equipment and required highly skilled operators who could delicately pluck the timbers out of the sky without damaging them. The huge timbers that made up the frame of the building were bought by Jeff Houston of Vintage Timber Works. The first thing I saw when I walked in were these timbers right here. That's uh, definitely the most valuable uh, piece of wood that's out here. The large warehouses that are out there at the Oakland Army Base were built all out of wood, and there's a lot of large dimension lumber in them. It's all old growth Douglas fir. Building 802 was part of a new supply base and port facility built on the Oakland waterfront, just south of the Bay Bridge at the start of World War II. Those warehouses were built between 1941 and 1943 at a time when it was really crucial to get a lot of material out into the Pacific Theater to supply the war effort. Those warehouses are built for the use of forklifts and pallets, and you need a warehouse to protect the cargo. But when containerization came in, each container is its own little warehouse, and it's weatherproof, and you don't need a large warehouse. And in fact, a large warehouse gets in the way of the storage of containers. With the deconstruction of Building 802, the giant timbers that had been logged and milled 67 years earlier we're ready to start a new life. 
somebody in the higher end that's buying this wood is trying to create something that nobody else has. It's something unique. You know, a piece of wood that has the old bolt holes in it, the old nail holes in it. It's a full rough beam. It, it doesn't have any paint on it. They can pretty much use it as is, and it lends itself to rustic architecture. And then, of course, with the green movement in full swing now, a lot of people are interested in the wood for the environmental benefit uh, of using it. You have to have people on board that know how to dismantle carefully so that they don't compromise the value of the wood. If you take some of these beams and you just simply drop them to the ground, what's going to happen is they'll get fractured. And you might not even be able to see the fracturing. It might be internally fractured. So you have to be assured when you're buying it that it has been taken down carefully and by somebody that knows what they're doing. We'll be able to salvage approximately 98% of the big timbers, which they consider dimensional lumber. And the smaller timbers, the 2 by 6 and uh, which we consider nominal lumber, will be in the 90% range. And then what doesn't go to the reuse industry, we will, the non-painted wood, will actually be chipped and, and used for biofuels. We were surprised at how fast it went. We were surprised initially when Zach Orr told us that they thought they could take it down in 75 days, and it's been less than 75 days, and the building is basically down now. I think there was a lot of doubt to begin with, but we did, through this project, find out that we could do it and that it was financially feasible to do that. Virtually all of the wood was recovered, both the large dimension uh, timbers and the, uh, the smaller dimension, the siding and the, uh, the decking, the, the roof decking. All of the metal and concrete was recovered the only thing that wasn't recovered, in fact, was the painted drywall, the window glass that was broken out from the clear story windows, and then the uh, portion of the roofing that did not get uh, recovered, which was most of the roofing, but uh, they did recover a lot of the building. The 265,000 square foot warehouse was taken apart in 75 days. 98% of the large dimension timbers were recovered for reuse, yielding a total of 630 tons of wood. 80% of the small lumber in the roof and wall was recovered, yielding another 540 tons. 343 tons of damaged wood was used for mulch or biofuel. Reusing and recycling the wood in building 802 avoided the generation of greenhouse gases comparable to removing 286 cars from the road. Well, I think everyone kind of has these images of these big buildings just being demoed out, they're imploded, they come down. A long time ago, people used to come out and watch it and think that was just great. Now we like to think that people are coming out and watching these types of projects come out piece by piece. You know, we used to demo things with machines and just put it in a pile or put it in trucks and haul it off and, you know, it, used to make me sick that all this good lumber is just going to the landfill, you know. Traditionally, I think most demo contractors are dialed into the old uh, uh, bring an excavator out, crush it, and haul it to the dump. Uh, but I think that's beginning to turn around, uh, especially when they see that there is some value to be had in the wood. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why Zacker took on this challenge is because we do believe that it is the wave of the future. And the more experience that we can get in this deconstruction and salvage, the better we'll be as a company. Well, the first thing we'd love for building owners is just to even look at the concept of deconstructing a building. You definitely need more time to um, do this process, and it's more labor intensive. So depending upon the types of materials and what's in the material, um, it definitely is on a case-by-case -case scenario. But the first thing we ask building owners is just at least consider it. There's organizations, our organization can help put you in touch with salvage companies to at least get the ball rolling to start looking at it. Building 802 illustrates the reuse potential of old growth timber. With many more warehouses slated for demolition, isn't it time we consider a better way of saving our precious natural resources?